Hey there, Brandon Craft with Motion VFX, and today we're going to look at the Shadow Catcher for MO2. So here we are inside of Apple Motion and I already have two pieces added. I have the MO2 object as well as the basketball footage and if I hide this MO2 group, we can see the jump roping guy with the basketball court. Now our goal first of all is to take these basketballs that are inside of MO2, it's just a basketball instancer with a modifier applied. We want to use the alpha channel of the background so that we just see the basketballs and to do that inside of MO2 underneath the inspector, let's go to scene settings for the background, the background type, let's set this to alpha channel. This will hide that default background and now we have our basketballs in our scene with our footage. Now our next goal is to get these basketballs to cast shadows onto this court. That's where the shadow catcher comes into play. So I'm still inside of MO2 and the first thing I want to do is I'm going to add a plane. Let's adjust the position of this plane so that we can actually see it and let's position it on this basketball court here. A Little bit of rotation. Just notice we're somewhat lined up where the basketball court meets this fence. Doesn't have to be perfect. Scaling out on the X so that we can cover the entire basketball court. And maybe just a little bit of Z rotation to rotate it ever so slightly. That looks pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to cast shadows onto this plane and to do that we need to add a light. Now for the shadow catcher to work you can either use a sphere light or spotlight. I'll use a sphere light in this tutorial. A few settings here to adjust. First of all I do not want to render shape. And I tell you what let me hide this light and the plane real quick. Let's look at this shadow to see where the light is coming from. So the light is somewhere over here and we want to have this angle with the shadows of our basketballs. So reshowing the plane and the light, I'm going to position this light somewhere over here. And we could use the 3D gizmo or I'm just going to dial it in with these manual settings over here. So this did move the light over to the left, slightly back into the scene if you will, and we did move it up. To see the shadows on the plane, let's come down and let's check on enable shadows. And now that we have these shadows, we want to see these shadows, but we do not want to see anything else on this plane, and that's where the shadow catcher comes into play. So here's what you need to do. For the plane, let's add a new material, nothing fancy. And for that material settings, if we scroll down to the bottom where we have the opacity channel, let's set the mode to shadow catcher. And boom, just like that, the plane has disappeared, but the shadows that that plane was catching are still there, hence the shadow catcher. Now some things to note here, if you have your MO2 set up in construction mode, you will not see those shadows. Make sure you're in beauty mode when you're working with this. And these shadows look dark, they don't match the color of the man shadow. So let's start adjusting some of those settings right now. If the shadows are too dark, let's lower that shadow opacity. And I'm scrubbing my playhead just a little bit so I can see some of those shadows that are closer to the man because we're getting ready to match those colors up. Now more than likely we probably will be jumping back and forth between our filters in motion as well as some of the settings that we have inside of MO2. For example, my default camera, I'm just gonna go ahead and set its camera settings. I'm gonna go ahead and set those to sharp. Doesn't change too much, but that will help us out when we get to the basketballs as well right here in a moment. Speaking of basketballs, obviously these do not look right, but we will fix that with some color correction as well. But the first thing I want to focus on for this tutorial is the shadows since we're talking about the shadow catcher. Now there's tons of ways that you can color correct this, but the way that I'm going to show you here, we're going to focus on the shadows separately and then we'll come back and focus on the basketballs. And to do that, I'm going to take my MO2 and I'm going to create another group. And for this group, I'm going to call it group shadows. I'm going to select MO2 and I'm going to apply a rectangle mask to the shadows. So this rectangle I'm drawing here is just pretty much going to cover the basketball court. This doesn't have to be perfect, but basically we want to mask out those basketballs. Just like that, the basketballs are gone and now we see our shadows. So any filters that we apply to this group shadows will only apply to these shadows. And again, we got those shadows by applying that shadow catcher to that new material that we applied to the plane. Keep that in mind. So for this shadow group, two filters I'm going to use here. One of those underneath color, let's select color wheels. 
And the second filter we'll use for blur, Gaussian blur, or Gaussian blur, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to hide the blur for right now and let's focus on our color. So the man shadow has a bluish green tint to me and obviously we don't see that same tint, that same color on these shadows. So for our color wheels filter, I'm going to take my shadows and I'm going to drag this color here so that we can get it somewhat to that bluish green. I'm going to darken that up, maybe dial down on some of the saturation and I'll fine tune that and the shadows drop down. Now again, they still look a little bit too saturated, a little bit too dark. So i tell you what, I mentioned we would be jumping back and forth between MO2 and our filters. Let's go back into MO2. For our light, down here in the settings, let's just knock this intensity down to say 50. So these shadows here that are closer to the man, those do match pretty good. Some of these appear to fade out, but I'm okay with that shadow effect. You can bump this intensity up and feel free to go mess with those color wheel settings some more to get the effect that you want. Now I mentioned this Gaussian blur, the edges of these shadows look a little bit too crisp, so I'm going to check that blur, select it, make sure I'm in the inspector, and I'm going to crank up that blur to say 20. And notice by doing this, we do blur up the edges of those shadows a little bit. I'm okay with that. Now when we dive into the basketballs right here in a moment, we will mess with some of the render settings, maybe adjust some of the camera settings as well. We'll change the light color, but this MO2 group that we have here is in our shadow group. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take this shadow group and we're going to duplicate it. I'm going to rename this one group basketballs. I'm going to hide the group shadows, twirl down this new group for this MO2 copy. Remember we had a rectangle mask applied to this. I'm going to delete that. We could have simply moved that mask up as well, but I'm going to select MO2 and I'm going to apply a new rectangle mask. And now we're going to mask the basketballs. So notice what happened there. The shadows have now disappeared and now we're focusing solely on our basketballs. So we had this MO2 copy and this is in our basketballs group. Heading to the camera for the camera settings. We already have it set to sharp, that's fine. And these two filters did copy over. So let's go ahead and delete those. We'll start from scratch. Heading back into MO2. Let's take our light and let's bump the intensity up. I'm gonna knock this on up to about a thousand. Now we can see our basketballs a little bit better. And then underneath the scene settings, I mentioned that we were gonna adjust some of these settings. For render settings, if we come down here and we uncheck this filmic tone map, that lets us see a little bit more of the shadowed part of the basketballs. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And some things I want to talk about now are ambient occlusion. Basically, the closer these basketballs are together, maybe we want to strengthen or weaken the shadows that they cast on each other. So still inside of the render settings, ambient occlusion, if I crank this up, or if I knock it all the way down. Maybe you did notice a subtle difference between the way those shadows were interacting when the balls are closer to each other. I honestly think halfway was just fine. We can maybe adjust the environment. Maybe we wanna see a little bit more of these shadowed parts. So for an environment underneath cloudy, let's try playground. Didn't change too much. We can change the horizontal offset. Try 180. Notice that made it darker. Let's try 90. Not much change there. Let's try 270. 270 looks pretty good. That kind of lights up the back side a little bit. Let's try 330. Pretty good. Some further correction there. We can come in here and crank up this brightness a little bit. I'm going to come to my light for the basketballs. And I'm actually going to use a different color for these lights because I don't want to see as much orange on these basketballs. The color that I want to use is somewhat of a light brown color. In my opinion, that gives those orange basketballs a slight brown leathery tint to it. I'm also going to crank down this light radius to 0.1. So that glare or speckle off of each basketball did get quite a bit smaller. Again, if I crank this back up to one, you can see a big difference. And earlier I did delete those two filters, the Gaussian blur, as well as the color wheels. Let's go ahead and add those back. Or if you did keep them, just go ahead and reset them. And just like earlier, I did hide the blur first. Let's focus on the wheels. Let's brighten it up some. Desaturated a hair. Let's get some yellow in on our highlights. Bring that saturation down. And I tell you what, I think I want to bring back that bluish green shadow that we had on the basketball court, but now we're applying those to the basketball. And then for my drop downs, I'll come and fine tune this. Shift Z to fit the project to the window. Let's uncheck our blur, head into the blur. Let's try 10, that's probably gonna be too much. Bring in our shadows, 
And yeah, you could sit here and spend hours upon hours trying to get these basketballs to match that scene perfectly. Tweet these to your liking and let's have one final look at that final effect. For the latest tips, tricks, and tutorials from Motion VFX, make sure to subscribe. Again, my name is Brandon Kraft. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.